Mindfulness of Breathing, Anapanasati Sutta. I have heard that on one occasion, the Blessed One was staying near Savati in the Eastern Monastery, the palace of Migara's mother, together with many well-known elder disciples, Venerable Sariputta, Venerable Maha Mogalyana, Venerable Maha Kachapa, Venerable Maha Kachana, Venerable Maha Kotita, Venerable Maha Kapina, Venerable Maha Kunda, Venerable Revata, Venerable Ananda, and other well-known elder disciples. On that occasion, the elder monks were teaching and instructing. Some elder monks were teaching and instructing ten monks. Some were teaching and instructing twenty monks. Some were teaching and instructing thirty monks. Some were teaching and instructing forty monks. The new monks being taught and instructed by the elder monks were discerning grand successive distinctions. Now on that occasion, the Opasata day of the 15th, the full moon night of the Pavarana ceremony, the Blessed One was seated in the open air surrounded by the Sangha of monks. Surveying the silent Sangha of monks, he addressed them. Monks, I am content with this practice. I am content at heart with this practice. So arouse even more intense persistence for the attaining of the as yet unattained, the reaching of the as yet unreached, the realization of the as yet unrealized. I will remain right here at Savati for another month through the white water lily month the fourth month of the rains. The monks in the countryside heard the Blessed One, they say, will remain right there at Savati through the white water lily month, the fourth month of the rains. So they left for Savati to see the Blessed One. Then the elder monks taught and instructed the new monks even more intensely. Some elder monks were teaching and instructing ten monks, some were teaching and instructing 20 monks, some were teaching and instructing 30 monks, some were teaching and instructing 40 monks. The new monks being taught and instructed by the elder monks were discerning grand successive distinctions. Now on that occasion, the Opasata of the 15th, the full moon night of the white water lily month, the fourth month of the rains, the Blessed One was seated in the open air, surrounded by the Sangha of monks. Surveying the silent Sangha of monks, he addressed them, Monks, this assembly is free from idle chatter, devoid of idle chatter, and is established on pure heartwood. Such is this Sangha of monks, such is this assembly, the sort of assembly that is deserving of gifts, the serving of hospitality, the serving of offerings, the serving of respect, an incomparable field of merit for the world. Such is this Sangha of monks, such is this assembly. The sort of assembly to which a small gift, give, when given, becomes great, and a great gift greater. This is this Sangha of monks. Such is this assembly, the sort of assembly that is rare to see in the world. Such is this Sangha of monks, such is this assembly, the sort of assembly that it would be worth traveling for leagues, taking along provisions in order to see. In this Sangha of monks, there are monks who are arahants, whose effluents are ended, who have reached fulfillment, done the task, laid down the burden, attained the true goal, laid to waste the fetter of becoming, and who are released through right gnosis. Such are the monks in this Sangha of monks. In this Sangha of monks, there are monks who, with the wasting away of the five lower fetters, are due to arise spontaneously in the pure abodes there to be totally unbound, destined never again to return from the world, 
such are the monks in this Sangha of monks. In this Sangha of monks, there are monks who, with the wasting away of the first three fetters, and with the attenuation of passion, aversion, and delusion, are once returners, who, on returning only once more to this world, will make an ending to stress. Such are the monks in this Sangha of monks. In this Sangha of monks, there are monks who, with the wasting away of the first three fetters, are stream enterers, certain never again, destined for the lower realms, headed for self-awakening. Such are the monks in this Sangha of monks. In this Sangha of monks, there are monks who remain devoted to the development of the four establishings of mindfulness, the four right exertions, the four bases of power, the five faculties, the five strengths, the seven factors for awakening, the noble eightfold path. Such are the monks in the Sangha of monks. In this Sangha of monks, there are monks who remain devoted to the development of goodwill, compassion, empathetic joy, equanimity, the perception of the unattractiveness of the body, the perception of inconstancy. Such are the monks in this Sangha of monks. In this Sangha of monks are the monks who remain devoted to mindfulness of in and out breathing. Mindfulness of in and out breathing, when developed and pursued, is of great fruit, of great benefit. Mindfulness of in and out breathing, when developed and pursued, brings the four establishings of mindfulness to their culmination. The four establishings of mindfulness, when developed and pursued, bring the seven factors for awakening to their culmination. The seven factors for awakening, when developed and pursued, bring clear knowing and release to their culmination. Mindfulness of in and out breathing. Now, how is mindfulness of in and out breathing developed and pursued so as to be of great fruit, of great benefit? There is the case where a monk having gone to the wilderness, to the shade of a tree, or to an empty building, sits down, folding his legs crosswise, holding his body erect, and establishing, and establishing mindfulness to the fore. Always mindful, he breathes in. Mindful, he breathes out. 1. Breathing in long, he discerns, I am breathing in long. Or breathing out long, he discerns, I am breathing out long. Or breathing in short, Two, or breathing in short, he discerns, I am breathing in short. Or breathing out short, he discerns, I am breathing out short. Three, he trains himself, I will breathe in sensitive to the entire body. He trains himself, I will breathe out sensitive to the entire body. Four, he trains himself, I will breathe in calming bodily fabrication. He trains himself, I will breathe out calming bodily fabrication. 5. He trains himself, I will breathe in sensitive to rapture. He trains himself, I will breathe out sensitive to rapture. 6. He trains himself, I will breathe in sensitive to pleasure. He trains himself, I will breathe out sensitive to pleasure. 7. He trains himself, I will breathe in sensitive to mental fabrication. He trains himself. I will breathe out sensitive to mental fabrication. 8. He trains himself. I will breathe in calming mental fabrication. He trains himself. I will breathe out calming mental fabrication. 9. He trains himself. I will breathe in sensitive to the mind. He trains himself. I will breathe out sensitive to the mind. 10. He trains himself. I will breathe in gladdening the mind. He trains himself. I will breathe out gladdening the mind. 11. He trains himself. I will breathe in concentrating the mind. He trains himself. I will breathe out concentrating the mind. 12. 
he trains himself I will breathe in releasing the mind he trains himself I will breathe out releasing the mind 13 he trains himself I will breathe in focusing on inconstancy he trains himself I will breathe out focusing on inconstancy 14 he trains himself I will breathe in focusing on dispassion or fading he trains himself I will breathe out focusing on dispassion 15 he trains himself I will breathe in focusing on cessation he trains himself I will breathe out focusing on cessation 16 he trains himself I will breathe in focusing on relinquishing he trains himself I will breathe out focusing on relinquishing this is how mindfulness of in and out breathing is developed and pursued so as to be of great fruit of great benefit the four establishings of mindfulness and how is mindfulness of in and out breathing developed and pursued so as to bring the four establishings of mindfulness to their culmination one on whatever occasion a monk breathing in long discerns I am breathing in long or breathing out long discerns I am breathing out long or breathing in short discerns I am breathing in short or breathing out short discerns I am breathing out short trains himself I will breathe in and out sensitive to the entire body trains himself I will breathe breathe in and out calming bodily fabrication on that occasion the monk remains focused on the body in and of itself ardent alert and mindful subduing greed and distress with reference to the world I tell you monks that this the in and out breath is classed as a body among bodies which is why the monk on that occasion remains focused on the body in and of itself ardent alert and mindful subduing greed and distress with reference to the world two on whatever occasion a monk trains himself I will breathe in and out sensitive to rupture trains himself I will breathe in and out sensitive to pleasure trains himself I will breathe in and out sensitive to mental fabrication trains himself I will breathe in and out calming mental fabrication on that occasion the monk remains focused on feelings in and of themselves ardent alert and mindful subduing greed and distress with reference to the world I tell you monks that this careful attention to in and out breaths is classed as a feeling among feelings which is why the monk on that occasion remains focused on feelings in and of themselves ardent alert and mindful subduing greed and distress with reference to the world three on whatever occasion a monk trains himself I will breathe in and out sensitive to the mind trains himself I will breathe in and out gladdening the mind trains himself I will breathe in and out concentrating the mind trains himself I will breathe in and out releasing the mind on that occasion the monk remains focused on the mind in and of itself ardent alert and mindful subduing greed distress with reference to the world I don't say that there is mindfulness of in and out breathing in one of lapse mindfulness and no alertness which is why the monk on that occasion remains focused on the mind in and of itself ardent alert and mindful subduing greed and distress with reference to the world four on whatever occasion a monk trains himself I will breathe in and out focusing on inconstancy trains himself I will breathe in and out focusing on dispassion 
trains himself, I will breathe in and out, focusing on cessation. Trains himself, I will breathe in and out, focusing on relinquishing. On that occasion, the monk remains focused on mental qualities in and of themselves, ardent, alert, and mindful, subduing greed and distress with reference to the world. He who sees with discernment the abandoning of greed and distress is one who watches carefully with equanimity, which is why the monk on that occasion remains focused on mental qualities in and of themselves, ardent, alert, and mindful, subduing greed and distress with reference to the world. This is how mindfulness of in and out breathing is developed and pursued so as to bring the four establishings of mindfulness to their culmination. The seven factors for awakening and how are the four establishings of mindfulness developed and pursued so as to bring the seven factors for awakening to their culmination. One, on whatever occasion the monk remains focused on the body in and of itself, ardent, alert, and mindful, subduing greed and distress with reference to the world, on that occasion his mindfulness is steady and without lapse. When his mindfulness is steady and without lapse, then mindfulness as a factor for awakening is aroused in him. He develops it and for him it goes to the culmination of its development. 2. Remaining mindful in this way, he examines, analyzes, and comes to a comprehension of that quality with discernment. When he remains mindful in this way, examining, analyzing, and coming to a comprehension of that quality with discernment, then analysis of qualities as a factor for awakening is aroused in him. He develops it, and for him it goes to the culmination of its development. 3. In one who examines, analyzes, and comes to a comprehension of that quality with discernment, persistence is aroused unflaggingly. When persistence is aroused unflaggingly in one who examines, analyzes, and comes to a comprehension of that quality with discernment, then persistence as a factor for awakening is aroused in him. He develops it, and for him it goes to the culmination of its development. 4. In one whose persistence is aroused, a rupture not of the flesh arises. When a rupture not of the flesh arises in one whose persistence is aroused, then rupture as a factor for awakening is aroused in him. He develops it, and for him it goes to the culmination of its development. 5. For one enraptured at heart, the body grows calm and the mind grows calm. When the body and mind of a monk enraptured at heart grow calm, then calm as a factor for awakening is aroused in him. He develops it, and for him it goes to the development, and, and for him it goes to the culmination of its development. 6. For one who is at ease, his body calm, the mind becomes concentrated. When the mind of one who is at ease, his body calmed, becomes concentrated, then concentration as a factor for awakening is aroused in him. He develops it, and for him it goes to the culmination of its development. 7. He carefully watches the mind, thus concentrated with equanimity. When he carefully watches the mind, thus concentrated with equanimity, Equanimity as a factor for awakening is aroused in him. He develops it, and for him, it goes to the culmination of its development. Similarly, with the other three establishings of mindfulness, feelings, mind, and mental qualities. This is how the four establishings of mindfulness are developed and pursued so as to bring the seven factors for awakening to their culmination clear knowing and release and how are the seven factors for awakening developed and pursued so as to bring clear knowing and release to their culmination 
there is the case where a monk develops mindfulness as a factor for awakening dependent on seclusion, dependent on dispassion, dependent on cessation, re resulting in relinquishment. He develops analysis of qualities as a factor for awakening, persistence as a factor for awakening, rapture as a factor for awakening, calm as a factor for, as a factor for awakening, concentration as a factor for awakening, equanimity as a factor for awakening, dependent on seclusion, dependent on dispassion, dependent on cessation, resulting in relinquishment. This is how the seven factors for awakening are developed and pursued so as to bring clear knowing and release to their culmination. That is what the Blessed One said. Gratified, the monks delighted in the Blessed One's words.